Welcome to our mock peer review video. Our goal is to give you an idea of how peer review committees function. We will simulate an NIH-style peer review meeting during which experts evaluate the merits of research grant applications and provide an overall impact score. I am the narrator and am here to orient you and add some comments. Of course, in an actual peer review committee, there is no narrator. And please note that the grant application to be discussed today and all the information about the applicants and reviewers is fictitious. Let me start by introducing our cast of characters. First, there is the Scientific Review Officer, or SRO. Hi, I'm the SRO. I'm an NIH employee, a scientist, and I recruit the panel and instruct its members on their roles and responsibilities. Then there are the reviewers. They're active investigators whose experience is relevant to the applications under review. Hi, I'm a reviewer and a chair of the committee, making sure that the review meeting runs smoothly. I moderate the discussions to ensure we appropriately address all the necessary elements and give each application that is discussed the time is needed. I'm also tasked with summarizing the discussion at the end of each application. Now, in a regular study section, there might be 20 or more reviewers. For the sake of this video, we have only three. For each application, the SRO will have assigned three or four, sometimes, reviewers. And we give these reviewers numbers, and that tells you their role in review. Hi, I'm reviewer one. And so for the application we are talking about, I have the responsibility to introduce the application as well as to give my evaluation. I am reviewer two. And I'll add any comments that reviewer one has not already made or where I disagree. I will focus on what we call score driving issues. I am reviewer three and will also add anything that I feel is important. Please know that while I'm reviewer three for this application, I might be reviewer one for a different grant. Before the meeting, I have already done a lot of work. I have checked the applications, recruited the panel members, identify conflicts, mostly based on being a, at the same institution as the applicant, but sometimes also because they collaborate and have then assigned the reviewers. Using an online system, I then sent each reviewer the applications they are responsible for approximately one month before the meeting. A few days before the meeting, assigned reviewers upload their preliminary evaluations. Panel members who are not in conflict can read the opinions of the assigned reviewers prior to the review meeting so that everyone is in the same picture when they do meet. While I may not have time to read all the critiques for all the applications, I will certainly read those from my colleagues where I am an assigned reviewer. By reading each other's critiques before the meeting, we can make sure the discussion at the meeting is efficient and focused. We can learn areas where we defer and prepare to discuss them. Sometimes when reading someone else's critique before the meeting, I will realize things I hadn't thought of myself, which might change how I evaluate the application. What you will not see in our video are the NIH program officers or program directors. They do not participate in the scientific and technical discussions or scoring of the applications, but they're listening so that they can better explain the results of the review to the applicants later on. The meeting starts with the SRO instructing the committee. Welcome everyone. I'm the Scientific Review Officer or SRO for this NIH peer review me meeting. On behalf of the NIH, I thank you for agreeing to participate on this review panel. At this peer review meeting, you will evaluate the scientific and technical merits of the applications under review and provide final overall impact scores for applications that are selected for full discussion. You are expert, your expert evaluations are critical components of the NIH peer review process through which the most scientifically and technically meritorious applications are identified. Your task is to review and score the applications according to the applicable review criteria described in the Notice of Funding Opportunity, or NOFO. The chair of this review panel will moderate the discussion to ensure that NIH policies are followed and that each application receives a receives a fair and thorough scientific and technical evaluation. 
There are 12 applications for your review. The first five applications are from new or early stage investigators. These are investigators who have not previously held an R01-like award or are within 10 years of receipt of their degree. The remaining seven are from established investigators. As you know, we will review the new or early stage investigators separately from the established investigators. The review panel will focus its attention on the most meritorious applications for each group. Therefore, the panel will discuss in depth only the top 50% of applications, i.e. the top three applications for the new and early stage investigators and the top four applications for the established investigators. This is an important point. When you get an NIH summary statement and it has a numerical score, that means your application was discussed. If not, instead of a score, it will say ND for not discussed. In that scenario, you will receive written critiques, critiques only from your assigned reviewers. Now I will describe the review process. First, the chair will announce the application to be discussed. Then reviewers with conflicts of interest will leave the room. Next, assigned reviewers will announce their preliminary scores. Reviewer one will then present a brief description of the application and a detailed critique focusing on score driving elements. Subsequently, reviewers two and three will present their critiques, emphasizing areas of disagreement and any new insights. After the initial comments from the three reviewers, the application will then be discussed by the entire review panel. After a thorough discussion, the chair will ask the assigned reviewers to assess some additional required elements, such as human subjects, which we will not focus on in this video. The chair will briefly summarize the discussion, which identified strengths and weaknesses, and then ask the assigned reviewers for their final overall impact scores. The three assigned reviewers will state their final overall impact scores. Then all non-conflicted reviewers, assigned and not assigned, will score that application. These post-discussion scores from the entire panel are averaged and are the score that is reported on the summary statement for the applicant. The SRA may provide additional instructions to the panel, for example, around confidentiality and conflict and address logistics, and then hand the meeting over to the chair. Using a list of applications arranged by the pre-meeting scores, I will start with what is called the streamlining process. The panel will focus its attention on the top half of the applications, but we want to be fair. And so every panel member can rescue an application in the bottom half and request that it be discussed. One scenario might be that a reviewer feels the pre-evaluation uh, missed something that was important, which a discussion could evaluate. So I hold a roll call for the applications in the bottom half. And if anyone simply states that they want it to be discussed, then it's added back into the agenda. We're not going to show that process here. Applicants whose applications are not discussed still receive a summary statement, which provides valuable expert feedback from the assigned reviewers that may be useful in preparing a future submission. We will begin by reviewing the application from Dr. Jefferson. Dicer and its interaction with HPV in oral pharyngeal cancer. Please note that Dr. Jefferson is a new investigator. Now, normally, I would then announce the assigned reviewers by name. For clarity, though, we've omitted the names in this video, but you can get the idea. So please start out by stating your preliminary scores. Uh, reviewer one. I had a two. Thank you. Reviewer two. I gave it three. Great. Reviewer three. My score was a one. I was very enthusiastic about this application. Great. Reviewer one, would you please provide a summary of the application followed by your critique? Sure. Um, this is a well-designed research project from a new investigator with an exciting research program and who is working on establishing an independent research laboratory. The application is focused on investigating the role of DICER-1 and its interaction with HPV in oropharyngeal cancer. 
a type of head and neck cancer that is on the rise in the U.S. population. The majority of patients diagnosed with oropharyngeal cancer have a history of smoking and alcohol consumption, which are important etiological factors. Further, human papilloma virus, or HPV, infection has been associated with development of oropharyngeal cancer. Five-year survival rates of oropharyngeal cancer are approximately 50%, and the majority of patients live for a short time after diagnosis. So this issue represents a significant public health problem. Dr. Jefferson has presented data that the gene DICER1 may play an important role in increasing risk of oropharyngeal cancer. In this study, Dr. Jefferson will carry out three specific aims. In the first aim, they will perform fine mapping of the DICER1 gene in 100 oropharyngeal tumors from HPV-positive patients to narrow down genetic susceptibility loci that may be associated with oropharyngeal cancer. Next, they will use the top independent variants identified in M1 to help build a genetic model to predict who is at risk to develop oropharyngeal cancer in HPV-positive population. In the third aim, they will seek to develop absolute risk prediction model by combining the newly discovered genetic components with non-genetic factors. Let me give you my evaluation of the different elements of the proposal. Let me jump in here to say that the review elements for NIH research program grants, including the R01, are changing in 2025. And so we will not emphasize either the historical criteria elements or the new ones. However, the areas you will hear discussed are always going to be important, but with evolving emphasis. Sorry for the interruption, reviewer one. The overall impact of this application is high. The proposed research has the potential to increase our understanding of the etiology of oropharyngeal cancers, a cancer that is on the rise in the U.S. In addition, this work is likely to have a strong public health impact, as it will present a way to discover who is at risk for this disease, thus creating new prevention or early diagnosis strategies for a high-risk population. Now, turning to the investigator, Dr. Jefferson is a tenure-track assistant professor with the University of Rockville Medical Center since 2011. Dr. Jefferson received a PhD in molecular epidemiology from the University of Southern Carolina in, 20, in 2004. Subsequently, they conducted postdoctoral studies in the etiology of rare cancers in the laboratory of Dr. Jackson at Boston University School of Medicine. This laboratory is known for its work in rare cancers. Their postdoctoral work led to several high-quality publications in the area of head and neck cancers. Dr. Jefferson will devote 25% of their time on this project, and I think this is appropriate. They have also added investigators with multiple areas of complementary expertise, including a biostatistician and a pathologist. Overall, they have a strong research team that should be able to complete the study aims. Now, let's talk about innovation. The level of innovation is high and lies in the analysis plan for a small study population. The PI and her biostatistician have created a novel way of analyzing genomic data from small study members in a way that is scientifically meaningful. This plan could potentially be used for other studies of rare cancers where sample sizes may be small. Now, turning to approach. The preliminary data are outstanding and strongly support the investigators' hypothesis and reasoning for this study. The proposed research methods are also strong. And while the study population is not large, which is understandable given that this is a rare cancer, the applicant has created a new analysis technique to address this. They have made sure to include a biostatistician on the research team who will be able to provide her with the additional expertise needed to carry out this analysis. One minor weakness is that they did not present a strong alternative method should this primary method fail. Perhaps the omission of an alternative is because there are no investigator. So I will give them a pass on this and won't consider this to be score driving. Regarding the research environment, the PI and collaborators have adequate laboratory space and the technical resources available for this project are outstanding. The University of Rockville Medical Center is an outstanding clinical research institution with a strong record of funding in rare cancer research. The host institution is highly supportive of the research as demonstrated by letters from the department chair and directors of various core facilities. The investigators will have access to the genomic sequencing core and a pathology core, along with infrastructure and expertise to complete the study aims. No significant weaknesses are noted. 
Thank you, reviewer one. Now, reviewer two, you are a little less enthusiastic. Can you please focus your review on where you differ and the score driving concerns? Maybe just a bit uh, less enthusiastic. I agree with most of the comments of the first reviewer and that this application, if successful, will have a strong scientific impact. Dr. Jefferson, although new, although a new investigator has been able to generate strong primary data, the PI and collaborators have experience in the area of the proposed research and are highly qualified to lead the project. However, I do have several concerns. The, P, the PI never explains why they picked Dyson 1 as the gene of choice. Sure, they have demonstrated that the gene is associated with increased risk of oropharyngeal cancer, but there are other genes with stronger associations than Dyson 1. Why not these genes? Why not include these genes along with Dyson 1 in this work? This is especially important for the second aim in which they will seek to develop a genetic model to predict increased risk of the disease. They may achieve building a better model by including other genes with stronger associations. I'm also not convinced by the statistical plan. Yes, it is novel, but have there been any publications that have demonstrated its utility in performing this type of analysis in small populations? I would be more convinced and excited about it if they had published on the novel statistics analysis already. Last of all, I consider the lack of description of alternative approaches to be a bit more than a minor weakness. I think the applicant should have provided us with more information here, particularly because the statistical approach is not yet established. So for these reasons, I was a bit less enthusiastic. Otherwise, this is still an excellent application from a new investigator with the potential of making a strong scientific impact in the field. Thank you. Reviewer three. I was so enthusiastic about this application because it seemed to have the potential to solve a key issue with rare tumors. Maybe I missed some of the concerns mentioned by the previous reviewers. I think the second review raised some strong points about the lack of publication on such a novel statistical approach. This is uh, important in terms of the application being successful because without this, many of the studies won't work. But beside this, I have nothing new to add to the discussion. I still believe that this is a strong application from a promising new investigator, but it has a few more flaws than I initially realized. I will adjust my score. At this point, the chair would thank the assigned reviewers and open up the discussion to the entire panel. Panel members may put forth their own assessment or ask clarifying questions of the reviewers. The chair will moderate the discussion to keep it focused and to uncover any new issues that have not yet been addressed. Overall, an application is usually discussed in around 15 to 20 minutes total. The chair would then summarize the discussion, particularly if there are divergent viewpoints, and make sure that the entire panel is in a position to score depending on their assessment of the discussion and the application. So let me summarize the discussion. This is a well-designed research project from a new investigator with an exciting program establishing themselves as an independent researcher. The application is focused on the role of DICER-1 and HPV in oral pharyngeal cancer. The preliminary data are strong, as are the research methods. The goal is to perform fine mapping of the DICER-1 gene in 100 oropharyngeal tumors to identify genetic susceptibility loci, build a genetic model, and de develop an absolute risk prediction model by combining the newly discovered genetic components with non-genetic factors. There were some concern that the PI never explains why DICER-1 was selected as the gene of choice, as there are other genes with stronger associations with DICER-1 and it was suggested that including additional genes may result in a better model. The preliminary innovation is in the statistical analysis plan for a small study population. They are proposing a novel way of analyzing genomic data from small study member numbers. If successful, this plan could be used 
for other studies of rare cancers. Even though a well-regarded statistician is on the team, there are concerns that the method has not been previously used in any published studies, and therefore there is no demonstrated utility in performing this type of analysis in small populations. No alternative is suggested, which was deemed to be a weakness. In summary, our reviewers agreed that overall, the impact of this application is high as it may advance the study of a rare tumor and increase our understanding of the etiology of oropharyngeal cancers with a strong public health impact. The investigators and the environment are outstanding. Dr. Jefferson's laboratory is known for its work in rare cancers. So did I miss anything? If not, we can move on to assess the plans for protection of human subjects from research risk. The chair would now ensure that several score driving issues such as human subjects are adequately address, addressed. Then it's time to wrap up the discussion, starting with the final scores that reflect this. Okay, it's time to state your final overall impact score for the application. Reviewer one. I think this is a very strong application and the proposed research is likely to have a high impact. And while I agree with the concerns raised by my colleagues, I will remain at a score of two. Reviewer two. I agree that this is a high impact research, but given my concern about the study design, I'll keep my score at three. Okay, reviewer three. I remain enthusiastic about this application, but given the concerns raised by my colleagues, I will move to a score of two. Great, thank you. So the score range is two to three. All reviewers should now record their scores. If you are scoring outside of this range of two to three, while you don't have to share your specific score, please let us know if it's higher or lower and state the reasons. Note the give and take among the reviewers and the change in priority score by one of them. The weaknesses are considered in context with the overall impact of the application. Note also that all the reviewers score all the applications for which they have no conflict of interest. Panel members who wish to score outside the range, either better or worse, may do so and are asked to provide a sentence or two so that this can be captured by the summary of discussion in, uh, in the summary statement that is eventually given to the applicant. So before we move on, there are a few other parts of the application which do not affect the score that will be briefly discussed after the scoring is complete. For example, data sharing or model organism sharing plans. Lastly, comments on the budget may be made. This portion is intended to help program staff identify any issues prior to issuing an award and, if important, may be addressed when the applicant submits just-in-time information. I am mostly taking notes on the discussion. Occasionally, I may chime in on a technical issue or invite my colleagues from program to also clarify something. But for the, most applications, what you just saw is a typical flow. At the end of the meeting, I will remind everyone that the meeting is confidential and to make any changes needed in their critiques soon after the meeting, as I will need that information to prepare the summary statements, which the applicants are awaiting. The application received a final score of 27, which is an average of all the post-discussion scores entered multiplied by 10. For example, one score of one and one score of two would result in a final score of 15. A score of 27 this year resulted in the grant coming in at the 15th percentile, calculated by NIH using a distribution. At the NCI, this percentile is what will determine whether an R01 application is funded. Please note that the pay lines and percentiles are handled quite differently for early career awards like F awards or K awards. It is important to note that peer reviewers do not make funding decisions for the NIH. Our job is to thoroughly assess the applications and render an evaluation, which includes a score. Like any panel, we don't always reach consensus, but we do our best to make sure that applications get a fair and full review. SROs also don't make funding decisions. Our job is to make sure that the review process works optimally. Funding recommendations are ultimately made by program officers after the review meeting based on the merits of the applications as determined by review, the scientific priorities of the Institute, and the available funds. And they're subject to review by the boards that oversee each Institute and Center at the NIH. 
There's more to the process, but we hope that you found this video of the meeting that is at the heart of Grant Peer Review helpful. Department of Health and Human Services, USA, National Institutes of Health, National Cancer Institute, cancer.gov or cancer.gov slash espanol.